Hi, everybody. This is Peter Chipkowski, and thanks for joining us for another conversation with a local community member. We're so uh, happy today to have Mary Byrne Titus, who is the uh, coordinator for the Backpack Program at Taconic Hills, a really interesting and important program uh, that is uh, serving the needs of a lot of children in our community. Uh, Mary is someone that I've known a very long time. Uh, she was a little girl uh, who lived across the street from me as a little boy. Right, Mary? <laughs> Thanks so much for being with us. And tell us, uh, if you would, a little bit about your background before you uh, jump into the backpack program. Um, I grew up in Quebec Falls, so I've lived here my whole entire life. Um, I have um, a husband and I have been married for 36 years. We live in Hillsdale. We have have uh, three grown children. Um, I am a member of the Parish of Our Lady of Hope, where I al also work as the Faith Formation Coordinator, and I also work at Taconic Hills Central School as a um, teacher's aide. So tell us a little bit about your experience at Taconic Hills. Uh, have you been involved in the school the last couple of months prior to the backpack program? I'm actually working there right now with the child care program because we, uh, we opened up the school for child care for those parents who were emergency workers. So I've been doing that all summer. There's three of us working. Okay, okay. Um, and, and at the church, Mary, um, Our Lady of Hope, many of us who grew up here, of course, think of it still as St. Bridget's. St. Bridget's, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, it would be interesting maybe for listeners to hear a little bit about the history of the church and how it consolidated and changed its name. Can you share a little bit about that? Um, yes, back in 2009, we, uh, we merged with um, the parish of, our, of Holy Cross from Churchtown and they previously had merged with St. Mary's Church in Philmont. So when all three ch churches merged, we, um, we needed to come up with a different name so that everyone felt as though they belonged to the one community. So that's what we did. We had a consensus. Uh, we had a list of names. People chose what name they liked the best. And then the one that got the most votes was the name we became. And the cemetery there, I believe, is still, is still called St. Bridget's Cemetery. It is. Yeah. yeah. Because there's three different cemeteries, so we have to keep them separate. There are three different St. Bridget cemeteries? There are three different cemeteries. Because we merged, we have three different cemeteries, one for Holy Cross and one for St. Mary's and one for St. Bridget's. I see, I see. And Cumpic Falls itself has two St. Bridget cemeteries. It has the old yeah. cemetery on the yeah. corner of, what is that road called? It's North Mountain and- North um, Mountain and Miles? No, it's, it's not Miles. Oh, <laughs> maybe it is. I thought Miles was <laughs> near where you lived. Um, <laughs> anyway, there's an old church cemetery there, and that's where the original St. Bridget's was. Yeah, that's where it originally was. Yeah. Okay. Okay. One more fun fact okay. about St. Bridget's um, that I know. Maybe you don't know, but I'm going to tell you. Um, when when they were thinking about consolidating the 29 school districts in the early 30s, they were looking at a possible site for where the new school would be, the new centralized school district, mm -hmm. which of course became Roll of Jansen. Do you know um, where the other site was? Of course, Rojan School was built on the site that we know, but there was a yeah. second site. It's, the, it's where St. Bridget's is now, or oh, where our Lady of Hope is. I never knew that. I'm telling you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I was digging into the history of St. Bridget's a couple of years ago, or more specifically, uh, the history of the Rojan School, I came across some records and it showed those two sites and the community, I don't know if they voted on those sites, I think they did, uh, but, or maybe the committee that was responsible for the funding and so on chose the site where it is, but anyway. So Mary, um, <laughs> I did not know that. Uh, the, the, you know, uh, I spoke with the superintendent, uh, Dr. Howard, um, uh, gosh, he was one of the first conversations I had during COVID, I believe it was very early April, and he was able to share some of the work that the school was doing, what the teachers were doing, in terms of their outreach. Um, they were also, um, the school, as you 
know very well was doing an amazing job providing meals to, to kids as well in the district. Um, and now some of that work uh, continues, outreach and so on. So go ahead and tell us about, about the backpack program. A lot of the times, the kids, the teachers will listen to what the students have to say. So kids will come in and they'll be, I'm hungry, I haven't had breakfast, or they don't have a snack, or they're looking for extra snack, which means they're really hungry, or they make comments about having, uh, they don't have a lot of food at home, and the parents don't have money, or they can tell by the clothing that they're wearing. So the teachers are very, very good at just looking at the overall health and welfare of the child. So that's how they determine whether or not a student needs yeah. more nutrition. And, and uh, you said the backpacks are delivered on Tuesday. Is that happening during the school year as well? During the school year, they're delivered every, they're, they're picked up by the students every Friday. Over the summer, they're delivered. On Tuesday, I see, I see. And you know, we know that so many kids in our community um, um, are on free and reduced lunch uh, and consequently need this kind of support. Why do you suppose it's only around 20 who are using the program this summer? Um, that's a delicate question. Because as you know, a lot of families have received the stimulus checks. So some of them have money coming in now that they didn't have before. So I, we think, or we think it's because they do have that money, but um, hopefully over the next month or so, we'll see an increase in how many kids are going to want that, how many families are going to want the backpacks. I see, I, I see. And sorry, I keep going back and forth here, but. Um, you know, the summer program is one thing and the program that happens you know, during the school year is altogether different. Um, clearly, kids were not in school the last couple of months. We know that a lot of kids don't even have internet connections, so they weren't connecting to their teachers. Um, uh, we know that the food pantry is in full gear, the Rojan food pantry and the other adjacent pantries in our community. Uh, uh, have you had a relationship with, with Betty White and, and the team at the Rojan Food Pantry or the, the, the pantries in the district? We do actually. Um, sometimes when they, have, uh, when they have too much and they need to move it out, they'll give it to me and, I, and vice versa, I'll do the same. If I have too much product and I can't move it out soon enough, I'll pass it on to them. I see, I see. So where else do you get the product for these backpacks? We get all of our product from the Northeastern Regional Food Bank because they serve so many schools, they're able to buy it in bulk at low cost, and then it's delivered to the school, on, they deliver it for us. I see, I see. So um, moving forward in September when kids are back in session, whether in, do we know yet if they'll be remote or in classroom? Uh, the plan right now, the uh, letter we received from Mr. Howard was that they're going to be in session. In, in, in the classroom? Yes. Our, okay, great, great. I hope to speak to him again and get more detail on how it's going to be organized, but obviously they'll be, I know, doing some, some AB grouping and some small group teaching and yeah. that kind of thing uh, to keep things safe. Um, so then you'll rely on teachers when they're back in session to determine which students need to come into the program. And, and can teachers um, suggest this to uh, you uh, during the school year or is it a one-time thing at the beginning of the school year? Oh no, during the school year, that's why we, we, that's why we, uh, we are up to 51 students because during the school year, we have new families that move into the area and we also have, um, you know, family circumstances change. So yeah, always, always able to add on more students. That's great. And are they literally backpacks that you that you fill? Yeah. Yeah. Super cute. That's yes. and are, are they usable backpacks for the for the scholars? Yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. We keep track, we keep track, we number the top of them just to keep it discreet, but that's how we hand them out. We have to number them. So each student has a number. But it's and, it's insignificant. And do you, do, does a student use the same backpack, you know, 
all year. Oh, got it. So they just they just present it to you, and, yeah. and you restock it. Yeah. Yeah. So how can the community help? Uh, what can the community do to support this really terrific initiative? Okay, that's the community comes in on the monetary end because each child per year for each child is $183. Now we're doing 51 students and we are all self-funded. So the school, we don't receive any monetary donations from, from the school itself, but it, everything comes from the community. So if we need, if we want to continue the program, which we really do, it would be the community that sustains it. Awesome. How, how, you, you, mentioned, you mentioned that you and a colleague initiated this years ago um, inside the, uh, you know, ins inside the district. So, and thank you for doing that, Mary. That's, it's You're such welcome. an awesome way of changing the lives of a lot of kids. And, and unquestionably, there are more kids who need this kind of support. Yeah. But how, how do we find them? So um, uh, it's not part of the school budget yet, yet it's happening inside the school system. How are you, how are you able to convince the district to uh, allow that? Uh, actually, Mr. G, Mr. Gulasane was very on board with it. And actually, Mr. Howard is also because he's the one that initiated the program to continue through the summer. So they were very on board with it because they, they, um, they saw the need, especially with the number of uh, reduced lunches that, and breakfast that the kids are getting. And if folks want to make a financial contribution to this initiative, where do they go? They mail it to the Northeastern Regional Food Bank up in Latham, but in the memo line, they need to specify that it's for Taconic Hills. Because do you have, have an address? Um, I do have an address. Do you have an address? That I have would my be great. <laughs> I have my paperwork. Oh, yes, it's uh, 965 Albany Shaker Road, Latham, New York. One two one one zero. One two one one zero. Mm -hmm. And in the memo line, make sure that you write to Conic Hill so that money is directed toward this program. Our account, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Um, any expectations for the school year moving forward? Have you had any sort of indication that from teachers or from from families that there will be a greater need, especially as uh, the um, the funding uh, um, is being reduced potentially? Not yet, not yet, but, but I, I think there will be, yeah. Anything we can do to sort of help get the word out? I think you're doing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> good, um, good. Well, let's, let's make sure that the library will post this on their website and it will be on their Facebook page. Uh, you will have access to the link as well if, if you mm -hmm. want to circulate it as well with the district. Okay. That's, that's also possible. Great, I'll do that. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with folks about the program? No, I think we've covered it all. It's just that I, I, I myself feel it's such a wonderful program and the kids are very appreciative and they're always very happy. Like Mr. Goulassain on Fridays, he calls it down over the announcement. He's like, if you're in the backpack program, come down and get your backpack and you can hear the kids run in which you're not supposed to do in school <laughs> but you can hear them run in to to line up to get their backpack so that's always a good thing to see that's super sweet yeah <laughs> well mary thanks so much for for telling us about the program and for for managing it for starting it for managing it and uh, uh it's a great contribution to our community well, thank you for having me